Hello everyone and welcome back to Doing It With Brian. Today is going to be our first installment of, the, um, of my art and uh, show you all a little step by step on how uh, I like to paint and uh, be creative sometimes. So what we're doing today is I'm going to create a starry night um, and I had to tape off this huge circle on uh, my canvas here. So all I did was I got a big pot lid, laid it down the center, got a pencil, outlined it, and then took a week paint taping all this to make a nice circle or almost a perfect circle. But there, I know there's easier ways to do that. I just chose to do that way. It was the, uh, the most convenient way, but it didn't take me a week. It took me maybe 20 minutes or so, but it felt like forever. But outside of that, it's ready to go. My first step is to get my canvas, um, nice thin layer of um, white oil paint. So that way my uh, layers of colors will blend nicely. So I don't have to keep adding white. I'll just already have that nice layer there. And uh, as the painting progress, I'll explain what I'm doing in uh, each part. So buckle yourselves in. So we're gonna start off with the titanium white, which I'm gonna add to my palette there. I'm gonna grab a little bit of um, the uh, paint thinner, which is uh, the odorless paint thinner, and I'm gonna mix it in where I got um, uh, kind of a runny, uh, runny paint. You don't want it like dripping, but you want it thin enough to where it spreads easily. And of course, start from the center, work your way out in small uh, circles. Um, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, you can try another method. I just find that doing it from um, the center out uh, helps keep it even. Um, and of course you want to go all the way. Make sure you get all your edges. Um, it's very easy. You can tell which part of your canvas is wet and dry opposed to, you know, because it's all white. But uh, it's fairly obvious where you got some little um, blank pieces. So just touch up around the corners there. Make it real pretty like. Um, go over a few more times just to be sure. Don't make it too thick. We just want a nice thin layer. Um, if you get too much paint on your brush, just go ahead and clean it off. And then you can go ahead and um, uh, continue blending uh, the white in there. And what I'm doing there is a back and forth motion in order to get rid of all the brush strokes. Then move on to our two colors, which is emerald green, Parisian blue, and I believe it's a light blue. Uh, I can't quite see the color I used. Um, but it's basically like a baby blue. I'm gonna add that green to my titanium white <clears throat> uh, just to lighten it up. Um, so the, the center part of my uh, circle will have the light paints and then will radiate outwards the darker hues as we go along. So first I'm gonna start with my lightest color which is that green with a little bit of that white. Just kind of tap it and mix it together, get it, you know, uh, work a little bit of that white in there. And just like with the white, uh, we're gonna start in the center and work our way out. Real nice, just to lighten up that center. Uh, you can see how well that white is already blending with the, the green. There you go, just in small circles. You can blend this however dark you want because uh, it's fairly light color. <clears throat> Just kind of work it out in the borders. Um, you can blend that out. Uh, the further you go out, the more it'll dissipate. Um, if you want to blend out, um, make it smaller again, uh, in case you blend it too far and you just feel like you need to have less, you can always clean your brush off and work in that white and it'll, uh, it'll help um, lighten up the uh, borders of that green. And now our second color. Uh, we don't add any white to this because there's already white on the canvas. And we're just gonna start around and dab it and slowly but surely keep adding pressure and add smaller and smaller circles and blend outwards. Don't blend inwards because you'll just ruin your center. Uh, blend outwards to lighten it up. Just keep pulling it from where you initially uh, tapped the darker blue in there and pull it out just like that half moons 
little semicircles, whatever you want to do, just kind of blend it out to the wider part of the canvas. And the more you do that, the lighter it gets. And the same thing applies if you want it to be even lighter. Go ahead and clean your brush off and go over it and it will uh, uh, help thin out the blue. But as you can see, I'm just blending it all um, outwards, um, cleaning my brush off because I already got too much paint on there. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get rid of the excess, clean that bad boy off and go back at it. See, nice clean brush. I'm hitting those, those borders, help lighten it up. Continue to work the white. Um, you want it to be dark, but not uh, heavy, too heavy patches of blue. You want um, variations as you blend. So just kind of use your creative license and blend um, uh, the sky as you kind of imagine it to be, as far as um, what you envision. Now we move on to the darker blue and uh, same tactic. We're gonna tap it on the outside uh, with the, the concentration of the paint. And we're going to use that white underneath our canvas to blend it outwards. This one you really want to um, keep consistent with your blend. Go ahead and uh, clean your brush off as much as you need. Um, if it gets too light, you can always add a little bit of uh, dark color. But if you start off really dark, it's going to throw off the feel of your sky. So um, be a little sparing with your darker blue. You want the dark to be on the very edges which I'm doing right there. Uh, so the lightest part, your light source, which is the center of your canvas, um, keep it light and the very uh, outskirts of it is going to be dark. So go ahead and darken those spots up. And then once you have, you're gonna wanna go ahead and clean your brush off and blend in all those borders that were left behind from the other colors. Keep cleaning your brush and blend in um, those borders to make it kind of seamless, to make the sky, um, instead of having these harsh borders, it just radiates out uh, light to dark. All the way to the center. Clean brushes all the way to the center. Don't blend too hard, very lightly, because if you press really, really hard, uh, you're gonna muddy your colors up really bad. So it's very, it's kind of a light touch. You really don't need a heavy hand for this kind of painting. Tap and blend a little more of that blue in there. Want the um, outside color to stand out as much as I want the uh, light interior, um, just to maintain the uh, the, the shadows from my light, my light and dark. Now we have a perfectly clean brush because we have a bunch of brush strokes. So I get my big three inch brush perfectly clean and lightly go back and forth and I'm just blending out my brush strokes. And you can see how much it cleans it up. So ever so slightly and softly back and forth, working those brush strokes out of there. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and add some more white and paint thinner to it to make 
uh, the stars. So I added a dab there and I'm making it really runny, much more runny than the beginning. And I'm just going to take my finger and flick the bristles and it's going to splash and freckle out the sky. You can add as many or as little stars as you'd like. Just flick it and make those stars pop. Look at that, it's so simple and easy. It's just some paint thinner and titanium white flicked onto the canvas with your brush. So now we move on to the Parisian blue, burnt umber and black. You want, basically you get your dark colors and kind of mix them together. You're gonna need this um, to work on the trees we're about to make. Uh, so just kind of get your dark hues and blend them together. Not um, not too much. You don't want to just make them black because there'd be no point. You just kind of want to give them a good uh, once over uh, to mix in those dark colors. And now we get our fan brush loaded up with paint and we're just going to decide where we want our trees to go. You pick a spot, you top, you tap it and press down and as you get closer to the outside of the painting press harder to flatten out your bristles to make the trunk so you want it thin the very top press down and you make a nice thick trunk towards the end and make them various sizes because we're gonna have trees that are really close and some that are far away so just kind of as you feel it out just kind of add it you can even just add a bunch of thin lines and fatten them up um, with your fan brush um, later if you'd like um, but it saves you a little bit of time if you just tap it and then slide it down and just add more pressure as you get to the base and don't worry it's hard to mess up these types of trees just if you if it's something's looking thin you just add a little bit more paint and fatten it up and if you need uh, to thin it out, just take your fan brush, the very tip of it, and push a little forward to make a nice sharp point. There you go. Now we're just gonna add all these wonderful trunks around the circle, little tiny lines for tiny far away trees and the bigger ones that they are closer. So this is gonna be a forced perspective painting of uh, looking upwards at the sky from the ground level with these giant trees overhead. There you go. Bunch of those little bad boys and look awesome down the road here. Now we take the long end of the fan brush and tap in some branches. Just ever so slightly just tap them go across Try not to line them up too much. You just need the presence of the branch there. Just so you have somewhere to hang your, your leaves uh, or your pine needles that you're gonna add to this tree. And the next step, we just wanna create the base for these branches. Just tap and bring them out. There you go. See, it's starting to look something like a tree now. Use the corner of your brush when you get to the very top or point of the tree. And this technique you're also going to use to create the leaves on the branches once you're done with this step. You add as many or as little as you'd like.
It's looking like some sort of crazy space eye right now. So with the smaller trees, you can go ahead and press a little bit harder because they're in the background. So as you press a little bit harder, it fills up those branches with leaves and you kind of make them more tightly compacted to create the, the effect of a full tree in the background there. Just press a little bit harder, use the side uh, angle of your brush, the very corner of it, and tap all the way down back and forth to create those far away trees. Just creating tips on those branches there. I mean, those trunks. Just the very edge of the brush to sharpen up those points. Now we're gonna start filling up these trees with leaves. So we're gonna do the same tapping motion, load up our brush again with the same colors we were using, tap, push down, flatten out that brush the farther you get to the, the closer you get to the base. And look at that, it's all of a sudden there's all kinds of pine needles on those branches. You can see how hard I'm pressing towards the end there. Just kind of fill in the thin spots a little bit. I do want some separation, but uh, just like you, I have a creative license and just whatever your vision is, you can fill those trees up as much as or as little as you'd like. I tap, 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 tap. And you see that I didn't mix the colors uh, too harshly. All the, um, the darker hues that I use are actually kind of coming through the, the, the thinner the paint gets at the bottom, which is exactly what you want. They load the brush up again, nice and flat. Tap, 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 tap. More pressure as they get to the bottom more pressure. That guy needs a little bit more paint. And then also his tip disappeared, so we're just gonna go ahead and give him one. I mean, all of his friends have a tip, why didn't he get one? There you go. There you go. Nice full trees. Another tip add there. All of a sudden, it's starting to look like 
the canopy of a forest there. Just gazing up at the stars. Probably out camping, eating some mushrooms, some magic mushrooms and getting a magical evening out of it. Or maybe we were just out there camping like normal people. Definitely never claim to be normal. Alrighty. Just filling up all the trees. Make sure they, they look tree-like. <laughs> Now I'm gonna add some light blue with some white. I'm gonna add some highlights to the trees because there's a um, light source. So we're just gonna take some of this, lighten it up, and we're gonna add some accents. Like the, the sky light being reflected from the trees. And the very tops of your branches, you just tap in create those little accents of light and it starts to bring your tree three-dimensionally to life you could even add um, solely white and keep working the same technique to make it look like snow but for right now it's it's a starry night in spring, and it's just awesome to be outside. Once we've finished all these little highlights into our trees, I'm gonna add some more color to them to show that the um, the tree is actually full of uh, a different greens and yellows. Add a little bit of accent to those trunks. If they're sticking out far enough, just give them a little wink, a little tap. Give them some life to it. The, the tree trunk's big enough and the light's hitting it, just give it a little, give it a little highlight. And this blue is a little bit darker too, so being a little more sparing with it. So here's a light green, and then I got a bright yellow. Then I got a hunter's green that I'm gonna lightly mix together on this brush. Try to get equal parts of all three colors mixed into your brush. And just underneath those highlights, we're gonna add some colors. just shows the whole the variations in the branches, colors, texture. The same thing here, you can add as little or as much as you like.
Now, once you've had all that done and you filled in the base with his, um, with your branches and your colors, it's time for the peel, which is always fun, especially if you do it this way. It's, um, <laughs> it's just as fun as making it. So ever, ever so slowly, we're gonna peel all the tape off, have the big reveal of our nice clean border. And it's, luckily it doesn't take forever. Just peel it. There you go. And try not to let the tape fall back onto your canvas because it'll it'll mess up that clean background you wanted there in the first place. I've already got some on the corner like a like a genius. I'm gonna have to clean off with a rag and some paint thinner. Yep, yep, see, it's all over my hands. <laughs> okay, now my hands semi clean again. Let's try the rest. Here we go. Home stretch, baby. Don't be mean. There you go. One little last piece there. And ta-da, there it is, boys and girls. It's looking fantastic. This is super easy painting. Anybody can do it, and it's super rewarding and fun. Definitely give it a try. If you enjoyed watching me paint, uh, please let me know in comments. Um, I'll do another painting if I get the um, the urge to. If, if uh, you guys know of some sort of painting you want me to try, please let me know. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I will catch all you crazy kids next time.